Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise. I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. We're in my bathroom today, so we must be doing some product testing. I am going to show you a whole bunch of style edit products. I have sprays, I have powders. We're going to look at a whole bunch of different colors. We're going to look at a whole bunch of different colored wigs. And I'm going to show you how you can use products to alter the color of your wig in a non-permanent way that just may make all the difference for you if you are struggling with the wig journey because color is so hard. But there are some things you can do to modify the color of a wig that just might work. And the ones I'm going to show you today are not permanent. They will wash out so you can experiment. If you want to know more about this, then keep watching. In previous videos, I have shown you how to use Copic markers and furniture markers to root wigs and to put low lights into wigs to radically, well, either minimally, just a tiny little bit of a shadow root or radically change the color of a wig in the case of low lights. And I will link those videos in the description. I stand by those procedures and the processes and I love using furniture markers on wigs. The con and Copic markers or even permanent markers, which I haven't done, but I've heard from so many of you who've told me that you have with lots of success. The problem with using markers is that it is more permanent. They will fade when you wash and wash out just a little bit but they don't wash completely out. So if you use a furniture marker on your wig, there really is no going back from that. But I know that's a really scary step. And so I'm really thrilled to be able to show you some non-permanent ways to work with your wig. So in this video, I'm going to show you both powder and um, spray and they're all style edit brand. I do have a discount code for you guys. It is, I think it's Hey Wig Sister 25. You can get 25% off your order. I will have that information in the description for you if you would like to purchase some. I do get a little bit of a commission if you purchase, uh, but it won't increase your cost. And I wouldn't be telling you guys about this if I didn't think they were a fantastic solution. I'm just so grateful when sometimes there is an affiliate code available because that helps support my channel. I purchased some of these and some of these were sent to me by Style Edit. So I do have money in this video, not just my time, but I actually spent money because I'm so committed to bringing you guys solutions. I know it's really hard out there right now. Uh, the economy is just a little scary and costs of gas and everything else are going up. So it's really important that we um, know that the money we're spending on products is, is well worth it, but it's also important that we learn how to work with our wigs. We need to make what we have work in a lot of cases. We can't just keep buying more. So one of the benefits of a video like this is it's going to teach you how to go into your own closet and work with what you have or purchase a wig on clearance or on the secondary market that may not be perfect for you, but if you know how to work with wigs, you can make it perfect for you and save a lot of money in the process. Um, the other video I did on Style Edit in the past was I showed one of their blonde. So this one, I think this is the one I might have shown. It's the light blonde. And I showed you how to uh, lighten rooting on a rooted wig. It worked so unbelievably well, and it's a great great option if you either can't do rooting or you find the rooting on a wig that you have just too dark. Rooting does vary. So let me tell you, the wig I have on my head is Raquel Welch straight up with a twist. It's been modified. It's been cut. And this is in the color. Um, I don't know why this color always escapes me. It's like the most popular blonde. I'll make sure I list all of the wigs that I'm wearing in the description as well. Uh, so this one has a really dark root. And then another wig I'm going to show you is my Flare Mono by Ellen Villa. This one has a light, lighter root by comparison. And so sometimes rooting is good, but it can be too dark. So let me show you really quickly, just as a refresher, or in case you didn't see my video where I did this on a rooted wig, uh, all you do is it's a powder and it comes with this little poof. It's just right in the bottom of the container. And all you do is you dab it onto your wig. Look at how much of a difference that makes, you guys. 
And then you just want to kind of, you know, blend it in and you can use as much or as little as you want. It truly makes a humongous difference on a rooted wig. And so you can just go in and you can, it won't, it's not permanent. And so it may not completely remove the root. It really depends on how dark the root is that you're trying to remove, but it will absolutely lighten the root. Another use for these, all of these, is on your own bio hair to help blend. These are actually made for um, bio hair. It's not, this wasn't a wig specific product. Um, but if you've got dark bio hair that shows like I do, you can take these and you can put it on your own bio hair to soften that dark line or to change the color. I've done this and I will show you a red. It's not because I'm trying to go lighter. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to completely hide my bio hair, but it is going to lighten it quite a bit so that if I'm wearing a wig, it doesn't show through so much. So that's two uses for all of these is either on the wig itself or on your own bio hair. So if you want to see that other video that I made where I show you how to handle blonde, uh, dark roots on a blonde wig, then please um, check that out and I will link that in the description. Before we move on to another color, I just want to show you what the three blondes look like. So I have all three. This is kind of tricky for me to be able to hold these up and show you, but we've got light blonde. We've got, I think I reversed these, medium blonde and dark blonde. So light, medium is on the end and dark is in the middle. So one of the challenges that you're going to face if you do want to try this as a solution is figuring out which color to try. So you may actually have to buy a couple of different colors, but the good news is you never know what wigs you'll gravitate toward in the future. And so you may want to have more than one color on hand and then that way you can handle any color wig that you get. But I would say the light one is really good for super blonde wigs uh, that are kind of maybe a little bit more ashy, not as warm. This is Ellen Villa Flare Mono in the color Caramel Rooted. And this one, the blonde I think would be just a little bit too light. This is a little bit more of a dark blonde. It's got, uh, it's a kind of a warm, slightly yellow tones. So on this one, I think the medium blonde is going to be the better choice and I'll show the two. So this is light, this is medium. And so if you wanted to try to disguise the rooting on a little bit of a darker, warmer blonde, this is the medium. And I think this is actually the perfect color for this one. So when you look at it, I mean, you can really see what a difference it makes from one side to the next. And it's so easy to use. Um, a caution I will give you though, is that it is a powder and like other powder makeup, it, it will wear off. So you probably will have to reapply it every few times. The other thing is it may get on your hands. So if you play with your wigs a lot, I don't know if you can see that, but you can see it a little bit on my fingertips. If you play with your wigs a lot, you will get it on your hands. In the case of the blonde ones, I don't think that's really a huge deal, but if you're going to use the brunettes, which I'll show you, or the red, that may be a problem. So you'll just have to remember that you've, depending on where on your wig you've used it, you'll have to remember that you did that so that you can avoid touching it a lot and getting it on your hands. So that is a caution. But like I tell you guys in lots and lots of videos, everything in life has trade-offs and the wig journey is no different. There are no perfect solutions, just trade-offs with other things. So if you don't want to go the furniture marker or the Copic marker route, which once that's dry, it doesn't transfer to anything, then you're going to have to do something that's not permanent and then run the risk that it will fade or come off with contact. So again, just a few little warnings for you guys there. Moving on to the red. On my head, I have Heard It All by Raquel Welch in the color Iced Pumpkin Spice. 
shaded ice pumpkin spice. So this is a rooted wig and it's it's a kind of a red, maybe a light red with some blonde, strawberry blonde tones. So I'm going to show you the medium red. So this one is drop red <laughs> gorgeous is what they call it and the color is medium red i am not sure if they have other reds or not i can't quite remember but this one is a sort of a rusty kind of color like a rusty red and so with this one if you've got a red wig a copper wig and you want to try to minimize rooting on that then you can use this color and watch this Get a little bit more. Look at that. It's not taking away the rooting, but it is absolutely lightening it. It's so interesting how this works. Now, the one thing I want to caution you about on video Sometimes color can look odd because I've got a ring light on me and how the light plays off of things, off of synthetic fibers, off of this makeup. When I look in my mirror, it looks very, very close. When I look in my screen here, it looks a little bit darker than the rest of the wig. I'm not um, sure how it's coming across to you guys, but again, if we're trying to go lighter, it's going to be trickier and we're not maybe gonna have a perfect solution to that. It's going darker, that's a whole lot easier. So we'll take what we can get though, if we're trying to go lighter. And then again, the other use for this is on your own bio hair. Let's go over here. And if I just put some of this on my kind of bio hair in my skin, and then I can blend it in. It's so hard to do these things in my phone. So I, I got a little bit too far forward, but then you can start to blend your bio hair if it shows up. Um, if it kind of peeks out of the wig so kind of you get double duty out of some of these products the other thing you could do is you could take let me grab um let's try my caramel rooted one let's say you wanted to add some dimension to a wig and maybe you like a little bit of red tones i don't know how this is going to look on this color but it's not just limited to trying to get rid of rooting, but what if you just wanted to add some dimension and you wanted to maybe add some warmth to a wig that didn't have a lot of warmth? You can do this and you can just do it little pieces here and there for pops of color. And again, it's not permanent, so you can experiment and just see how it goes. So another really great idea with these products. Moving on to putting rooting on a wig. So. The previous section, we're trying to remove rooting or lighten rooting. What if you get a wig that is too light for you and you need some rooting or some dimension? So on my head, I have Aesthetica Fin in the color 1488. This one is a used fin that I think has been maybe thinned and relaxed. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, definitely doesn't look like any of the fins that I have. But this one is not rooted. It's 1488 and i don't believe it's rooted no it's just kind of there's a shadow because of the way the lighting is on it and i have two brunettes here i've got a light brown and a medium brown so one of the things you can just you need to decide when you're going to root a wig is how dark do you want to go and so let's take a look at the light brown and see what happens with that so we've got light brown So that's what the light brown does. So not too, and then again, you just want to kind of do this. You you know, you want to blend the powder in. And the dark brown, or in the medium brown. Let's do it on the other side. Yeah, that one's a little bit better, in my opinion. But they're both very subtle. So if you're just looking for some subtle rooting or some subtle contrast then that could work really great i'm assuming they also have a dark brown powder i don't have that one but let's talk about whether you should consider powder versus spray so there's lots of root cover-up sprays out on the market l'oreal makes some and they actually make some which i'll test in another video uh, to cover up dark roots um 
My problem generally with the sprays is that they coat the fibers and they make them feel kind of icky to me. They feel kind of tacky, they feel clumpy, uh, they weigh them down. I'm just not a huge fan of the root sprays on wigs. I much prefer the markers because they don't add any texture to the wig and this powder doesn't add any texture to the wig either. The problem with the powder is number one, it's not permanent, it can come off on your hands, but also there's only so much you can do with a powder. It's just going to only going to coat the fiber so much. And so if you're looking for a little bit more of an extreme change, then, but you still don't want to go with markers, then the sprays are probably what you want to try. And one thing I'll just interject here, you can also try this with eyeshadow. So you don't necessarily have to go purchase this style edit product, but maybe you test it out with eyeshadow first and see how that goes if you have some on hand. So in the sprays, I have dark brown, medium brown, and black. Um, so let's try, let's try the dark brown and let's just see how the dark brown does. I'm gonna kind of go back here. So that's, and the other challenge with sprays is it's hard to control them. So if you just want to do a little bit, it can be a little hard to control them. So I'm going to do the medium brown, let's see, maybe right behind it. That's really hard. I can't really see what I'm doing. So let me actually go to the back here and I'm going to do a strip here. Okay, so there is... Which one was this one? The medium brown. And right next to it, I'll do the dark brown. So the medium brown has some warmth to it, whereas the dark brown is a little less warm and just a little bit more plain brown. The medium brown seems to me to be giving off slight red tones. It's not red, but slight red tones. So a little bit of slight red tones versus a darker brown. So if you're looking at this and you're thinking, well, which one should I get? Um, I think you just need to decide, do you want something a little bit of a warmer root, maybe not quite as dark um, versus the, the dark, um, dark brown, I'm losing which one I was doing, is just a little bit less warm and kind of a true dark brown. Um, the black, just for the sake of showing it to you guys, let me, I just turned this wig upside down, so I gotta get back to where I was. And get to a part that, where it doesn't show, I don't know. I covered up, I'm, sorry guys, I'm messing with the wig and I lost what I was doing. So let's go over here with the black. Oh yeah, that's really black. That's really black. So if you wanted some black, if you maybe wanted to put dark roots on a brunette wig, the black is going to show up a lot more than the browns on a brunette wig. So those are some options. And if you don't use a lot, it doesn't feel too bad. Now, when I've tried the L'Oreal, it felt like it coated the wigs a lot more, but I also may have used a lot more. I can't quite remember when I was testing it out. So if you don't want that heavy, tacky, stiff coating on your wigs, just be gentle on how much you spray and I think you'll be okay. My preference though really is not to be able to feel it at all and that is true of the powder, not as much true of the spray, although it's not as bad as I expected it to be. The last one I'm gonna show you is a brunette. This is Ellen Villa Dance um, in the color, oh, I forgot, it, I think it's, um, mocha rooted or something like that. I can't, it's not rooted. I can't remember. I'll have to look it up and, and put it in the description. But I purchased this used from a wig sister a long time ago and I never actually reviewed it. But this would be where I was telling you before that maybe you want to use black um, to root a darker wig. So let's test that. And actually, I'm just going to, so I can see it. I can't see it in my phone here. So let's put some black on this one. I feel like maybe we got. A little out of focus there so there you go that's what the black looks like if I were to use the dark brown maybe on the other side
you can't see it much. So you can see the black here, but you really can't see that dark brown a whole lot. Maybe a tiny, tiny bit. I think in order for you to really see the dark brown, you would have to use quite a bit of product. And then now we're getting into it's making the wig feel a little funny and a little tacky. So I would caution you against maybe doing that unless you don't mind your wigs feeling like that. And quite honestly, it might be able to give your wig a little texture and it certainly will tamp down shine. So if you're dealing with shiny wigs, dry shampoo could work, but this could also be a solution. I'm just for just for the heck of it and see how it is. I'm going to try the red. So let's see. So this one is Auburn red and I just sprayed it right there. Ooh, I really like that actually. So if you have a wig and you'd like a little bit of some dimension, you'd like to warm it up a little bit, this auburn red on this one is very subtle, but it absolutely gives it just a little bit of dimension. That could be something really fun to try. Let's do a little bit of this one on my red wig and see what that looks like. So let's do it up here on the root. Look at that, you guys. That did a great job in covering up that root. It's not quite the same color as this. This wig is a, kind of a, a coppery, um, strawberry brown, blonde, coppery. It's a light red, whereas this one's just a little bit darker. But what it did was it softened up the brown in the root and Tonally, it matches the color of the wig a little bit better. So if you have a red wig and it's got a dark root and you just want to kind of maybe take some of the sting out of the brownness of it, you could consider getting this and adding it. And I grabbed the wrong one. Well, if you wanted to root it, there's dark brown <laughs> and you can root it that way. I'm starting to get myself confused. All right, I've got the right one. So let's come over here. Let me find a spot that it didn't just spray right up here in front look at that no rooting to be seen it's a little bit darker but it's red and isn't that sometimes the goal with wigs to make it look natural and if you have a red wig and you kind of want it to look like a redhead maybe that you just got some salon highlights that auburn would be awesome. So the color of this one is Auburn Red. So we tested a whole bunch of products today and the bottom line is this is a viable solution for you if you are struggling with the wig journey and color is your nemesis. Um, Copic markers, permanent markers, furniture markers, great if you wanna do something permanent to your wig. But if you're not there yet and you just want to experiment, root powders could be a great solution. Style Edit is just one brand, um, but you can certainly shop around. And then root sprays if the powder isn't quite cutting it for you and maybe it's not strong enough. And so then you could experiment with sprays. And again, the struggle is going to be color, but if you are going to be a long-term wig wearer, I don't think I would sweat it too much if you buy maybe two. Um, I, again, finances is one story, but um, to maybe get a few different colors because then you can experiment and you can test out some things and see what you like better. And maybe one wig will require one color and another wig will require a different color because of the variance in their colors. So it, it wouldn't be a terrible idea if you're going to be adding rooting to maybe get a light brown and a medium brown or maybe get a spray and a powder and you can really play around with it and see what will work best but overall i'm really impressed with these style edit products i think they work great i love the way that they have no scent in the powder and the sprays i know somebody's going to ask me if it has fragrance fragrance is in the ingredients but it doesn't really have a strong fragrance. It's a, gosh, I'm struggling to smell anything. It's so soft and subtle. I would say 
if you are, I mean, if you can't have even the softest fragrance and it makes you ill, fragrance is an ingredient. But if it's, you can't really do strong perfumey things, but something very muted is okay. It barely, barely has a smell. Like I'm really struggling to smell it. And that's me putting my nose straight up against it. And it's not in the air. So just having sprayed these in the air, it doesn't seem like it has a strong scent to me at all. So hopefully that will answer that question if that's one you have. Thanks for watching, you guys. I hope this was easy to follow. Um, I always get so nervous about these kind of videos. I just feel like they're so scattered, but um, let me know if you have questions or if there's something I didn't answer in this video and you'd like me to maybe address it and I'd be happy to do that. You can leave a comment below. And if you find these videos helpful, as always, please subscribe, like, um, interact with the video. It really will help me and my channel because then YouTube will recommend me more. And quite honestly, when you're searching for answers, the YouTube algorithm is difficult. It doesn't always deliver you the best. So if you kind of help me out that way, I'd sure appreciate it. Love you guys. I'll talk to you soon.